Holland in a mere foire. At least in the regular season, it's going to be the last time. That's right, it is round 26, the final regular season game of the top Quantos in season number four. Montpellier take the field and take on La Rochelle to single its end. Bonjour everyone and welcome back along to Montpellier career mode where today the boys are in action for the last time in the regular season against La Rochelle, a team down in ninth position but a team that has had a very story journey throughout this career mode. They've been to the top, they've been at the bottom and they've been right to the bitter end. Unfortunately for them though, it did not result in a title. Their season's done Ours is really just beginning, and much like last episode, we've gone with a much rotated lineup to what we've had throughout the season. We want no one more to get injured. We're safely in second, we can't catch first. Bordeaux, far too gone for that situation. And of course, third place have been in a battle of their own with fourth, fifth, and sixth, and they won't see anywhere near our second place. We've made the one change with the injury to Minozzi, and that does see Teddy Thomas coming on that left wing. Other than that though, the team is unchanged, ready for more action as this big team tries to make a name for themselves. On the side of La Rochelle, where they've had some brilliant players throughout the years of this team, but today it seems like they're a little bit low on the x-factor and quality side of things in the front row wilco low will certainly shoulder a lot of that burden of the big boys up front and when you look through the rest of that ford pack there's only two names that really stand out gregory aldred at the, on the open side and warren whiteley at number eight those two certainly will be hard players to come up against so our back row is going to have to be exceptionally on its best performance we know we've seen from San Coney and Underhill this season they should be up for that task look out for that 19 combination of Tuira Kerbalo and Nihaya West boy that's a throwback to Super Rugby to a good five or six years ago wasn't it two of the very best when it comes to their game on hand they could certainly toss it up with the best we've got two bomb nows which is a bit of a problem. Pierre seems to have doubled himself and died his hair, which is going to be a problem for us because he is an outstanding player alongside him. Jonathan Dancy, one of the greatest in French colours. And of course, Dan Norton, the seventh expert out on that right wing. Having a look at the two benches, and there's a couple of names that I'm surprised do not make that starting lineup. Herrera in 17 certainly is one of them. Doolin and Poisson in 21 and 22 miss out on the action as well. We're brought in Gundebi in from the reserves onto the bench in 22, replacing Teddy Thomas, who replaces Minozzi in the starting lineup. Right, for the final time this season, Top Quintas, regular season round robin play. Thomas Darmon says, let's get it on, and kicks off this round 26 matchup between Montpellier and La Rochelle. And what a start here, giving it out to San Coney. Release. And a slow ball back here for Merrick. Rumi on the left hand side. Underhill gets it round the corner to Harris. Oh, Rollhug just can't quite put it away. And Rollhug goes down with an injury just moments in. And straight away, we're going to have to make a change in our midfield. Now, the obvious question would be, uh, who do we put there? In Gun DB would not make sense, but I don't know if I want to risk Maylands. So do we chuck in Gun DB there? The chance of a second entry won't worry us too much if it's him. Maylands, I do not want him to miss out on further action. So, in Gun DB, in you come. First time we've probably played him in the midfield. Goodness me, it really has been damage control. Raul Hark has been Crouch. a player who has fired with the starting lineup, but never Set. quite solidified his place there. It's been that first line against injuries. There's a lot of hit there from La Rochelle. And carvalho has got the ball there. West into midfield. Dante out wide. Now Charles of Bob now up against Ratiz. Goes nowhere. And Slade will get up on the ball. Ratiz then doesn't get on the side. Mahoney has a go. He goes to the 22. Looking to run it out here. La Rochelle and Dancy gets through again. Bossier commits. Takes him down. Right there in Gundibi chasing the player back. But La Rochelle a step above the moment. And they bust through a button out again. Bossier gives chase. Button out to the corner. Runs from Teddy Thomas. And Button out scores. Great try from La Rochelle. Too much pain. 
pace, just enough to get it all the way. Well, the stamina took an absolute hammering there from Pierre Bond now. What's this play? Executed perfectly of the numbers. Darmon caught behind the line. And surprisingly, Teddy Thomas couldn't even reel him in over 40 meters. That's what they can do, La Rochelle. They wind back the clock to seasons gone where they were absolutely unbeatable. Of course, beating teams like Montpellier en route to their minor premiership title that season. Of course, just two meetings ago, La Rochelle actually beat us 28-21 as the conversion is successful. And the lead of La Rochelle goes up to seven points to nil. Um, a bit of a concern, if I'm honest. We had a great chance to score early. Lost Rahal Hunt, and then lost the ball, and all fell apart from there. Now let's get it back again and try for a second time. Ruiz! What a thunderous run there from the winger. But just can't quite get the support. And again, we lose the ball. Down the short side. Chris So, good run from him. Could be and should be lost. But he holds on tightly to it. And Ehi West gets his kick away. Bottier trundles back for it. And he'll look to counter-attack on it as well. Throws the dummy. No numbers there for Montpellier straight away. Now they get out through Shalong. That's a nice little tidy line from Shalong. Inside pass in front of the hill. He takes it to ground. Good tackle quickly made there. On the English International. Here comes Joseph. He's got numbers as well. It's Shalong again. And Galimi. Line for a tease. That is one of the best you'll see. Beat him or not. Montpellier know how to throw. That was an exquisite try. Put it all down. Anthony Shalong. Number five. You see him there. How good was he in the involvement to this? Joseph hit it up, beautiful drop off pass to Geelong and Ganibi there. And not for the first time in two phases, Anthony Geelong putting the finishing touches through a great line. And he's probably racked up about 30 or 40 meters in just two ball carries. And that is something to behold, certainly, for the big man in the second row. He's had a good run in and out of this team, here's Geelong. At number eight, of course, he was outstanding as well. And that running, carrying ability. It's been the forefront of tonight's fixture already as Bottier puts up the extra two and ties this one all up at seven points apiece. La Rochelle and Montpellier. Just the one converted try after 20 minutes apiece. Ehi West gets us back underway. Gomez gets it back and here he is again, wanting another crack. And a lower shout of fence. Shalong's doing it all tonight so far. Here's Gomez. Takes them on. Head first. Good carry once more. Keeping in the forwards. We like this is going. Santoni draws and passes. Receives again. Little chip off the lid. Chase and bum down, of course, in the back. Portland does well. Retees up and tries to secure the possession, but it comes back to Bonnau, who just kicks it away to Merrick. And Gandhi is there. The ball to Jamon! Right man, right place, right time once again. Thomas Darmon making an uncanny neck of his ability to just be in the right place at the right time. We saw it throughout the European competition. He was perfect in support. Merrick went on a little adventure, looking for friends, looking for support. And he found two of the best in his old buddies in Ganibi. And Darmon down that left edge. Fantastic rugby from Montpellier. And this is really already becoming quite a festival game. Nothing in it for either side. Regular season wise, their seasons are done. Montpellier know there's going to be more in a fortnight, of course, but for these players, unless there's a massive injury crisis at training over the next two weeks, hardly any of them will feature. Maybe Teddy Thomas and a couple of forwards at a stretch like St. Coney. Of course, with no stunder in the lineup, that's a possibility. But uh, all in all, for these guys, it's a chance to put their name in lights for future seasons and maybe future clubs as well. It's Joseph. Taking them on, head first again, like he always does. Teammates, get in late, get in too late. La Rochelle, seal them all back. Great shot tackle there, drop down. 
Well done. Rocks in the tackle. Release. It's free sight. <laughs> Fighting a bit of width of the ball. And a charging run. Straight into Release. contact. D high west. Going high in the tackle. <laughs> Taking them with him. Here's another good run. This time it's Crobalo. Playing scrum half for the Dolts. He goes a little crack around the fringes. Priestson keeps it with the forwards. Doing very nicely. Finding more room out here on the right hand side for Norton. Norton shimmies and ducks and dives. But there's no way through that blue box that surrounded around him. And Merrick drags him into touch. Line outs, Tofua. Oh, ping, not, not straight. straight. That is a shocker. Tolan Fuat being so good again in these European matches. The likes of Darmon, he really was a standout. Minossi as well. Of course, injury took away his chance to Crouch. really shine at the end. Find. But there's been a number of players Set. in this group. And they have outstanding seasons. Feet from Dewey Carvalho. Holds it up for a double cutout pass into midfield and quickly out to Bond now. They want to take on Ortiz. He gets the pass away. One inside cut. Dance against it. Now Aldrin back inside the big boys of there will go low. The strong carry. Keeping in the tight now. Maone. And this could Not be a releasing. tight over. Better as a penalty. Quickly on the ball. Mahoney not releasing, and he's got to give it up. There's only one real option for this, and Darmon knows the score at 14-7. It's time to go off to halftime, and we'll have some oranges and cookies. Who knows what's in those sheds at halftime, but we'll spell it out and get back for the second half of action with Montpellier leading 14 points to 7 over La Rochelle after an exciting start to this match from the visitors. It's toned down just a little touch as Montpellier has taken over, grabbing a couple of very exciting tries of their own. The both teams shown they already want to throw it around in the possession. It's pretty mixed up there. 64% going to the home side has proved they've got enough in the tank to get this one in the lead. Can they keep it up in the second 40 minutes or do not go anywhere? We're coming straight back for the second 40. By the way this game's gone, you just never know what's going to come out next. Two teams with a very exciting squad. Oh, that's a shocking pass. Didn't really find the target he wanted. Ratiz come up with it late, but a number of black and yellow jumpers are there quickly. And they will get another kickoff turnover. Pick it goes again. Mahoney who just lost the ball before the halftime break. Might do it again. He does. Joseph is number. And a big turnover play there against the second rower. Ball scrapes back for Darmon, who's inside the 22. But the ball was, of course, passed back. He keeps in the field of play. And they're hitting it up there. Poplin does well. And Norton! Nailed by Ngandemi, who comes across. And for the second time in as many carries, Dan Norton funded into touch. Philip Fool will hope this time his line out's on the target. And he does hit the man. And Thomas takes the ball through the middle. One step, one break, one pass. And Ngandemi will score. Welcome back to the lineup, Gabriel Ngandemi. Well, Teddy Thomas shows just why he is in their first team selection. Thoughts. How good is this? Set play off the line out. Geelong did brilliantly. And then bang, Thomas off the right foot. Acceleration. Take out that last wave of defense coming across and support from Nganebi is second to none. Well, then forward see him in midfield for the final regular season game. That has come true. The lead is extended by another five, and Bottier will look to make that another seven. Here comes the kick. And as good as you like, that is over. Tiny little mite here for the Montpellier fullback, Anthony Bottier. A few decisions to make in defence, of course, conceded that early try, which wouldn't go down well. But his team has fought back hard, and they are now just a stroke away from another bonus point win. Well, that instead pass isn't going to have the situation as kickoff time has been a real concern for Montpellier. Release. Right, their French defence has been 
Quite exceptional. Saying as that as they sneak through. Beautiful. From the IOS to find Spot now on the Release. charge. Just about a turnover there from Gomez. Now they're in the 22. Carabalo. Release. Picks it up. Has a run. The stunt. It is La Volte. Picking up once more from the big man. Piso slips it off in the second row. Skin bothered as well. Mahoney now. It is Piso once more. Carries and holds on to it. Cabelli says, I have that. And he gets the way to Darmon, who drills this downfield. Wind at the back of the ball. And rolls its way up over the 10 mid line into touch. Well, that's been a fantastic hit back from Montpellier, but. Boy, that 10-12 combination of West and Bond now has been outstanding. This line out is comfortably won at the back from Aldred. It has been relatively quiet so far tonight, which will be a bit of a concern for this La Rochelle team as we've got two players offside there. Harris needs to get back. It's a bit of run here from Carvalho. Gets to Bond down, and he goes all the way. Simple stuff. And a second try for La Rochelle. Well, I was trying to talk up the work of Aldrin in that last phase, but he was not even close to being involved. Have a look at this. Tawera Carvalho just held the play up and shimmied around. Then bang, off it goes to Bond now, and he's gone. Classy stuff. Research, homework. Put a check beside it because it's been done brilliantly from La Rochelle. Here we were talking about the impact of a back rower, and we see one of the best little line out tries you'll see. Scrum tries. So back into the action we go. And Montpellier have got a lot of thoughts to make after this one. 62 gone. Well, the lead is cut down to just seven now. 21-14. As we go to this side, Harris. Oh, outstanding work from Chris Harris. Oh, he's from it back and down. And an injury to the Scottish International now. Well, we just can't buy a trick at the moment. And we're looking like we're going to have to look towards Maxi Malins. Both of the starting midfielders now off injured. And I think there's one thing they'll have to do here is make sure Max Maitlis does not die with this ball. We Crouch. cannot afford to lose him. Right Bind. Okay. Harris. Sit. No, that's a bit of a concern. But Maitlis would be devastating. There's a scrum feed for Montpelli 8. And will he send Coney? Go for a bit of a scamper. Yes, he loves to do the big number 8. Merrick. Picks it up. Capelli. Bottier up at the line. Can't quite get through. Run off with time on this high. Oh, shocking tackle from Dancing. And it looks like he may pay the price. Fully yellow card. Well, this is a gimme three. I think the way this game's gone. Normally we'd look for the corner and go for that fourth try. But the way that Lara Shell are playing, we just can't risk it. I'd prefer to win the game and get a bit of confidence going into the boys' minds. Go into those semi-finals like, yeah, we still haven't lost the game and how many? Eight or ten matches? Maybe not that many, six or seven. But at 24-14, that is a comfortable league yet again with 12 to play. And a man advantage as well. Still gives us a good ten minutes to surge ahead with that man advantage and look for that bonus point. Another goes from West. Underhill goes down and now Underhill's injured as well. Oh no. Devastation. What are they trying to do here? Probably we should have started Kamada instead of Underhill. But man, we have lost three players to this match. Four in this double round of the B team. Minossi, of course, last episode. Now we've lost Rylhart, Harris, and Underhill. Jeez, you have to say four players Sit. who are fringe starters. A lot of these other guys don't even get near it. Here is Sankoni, a very good scrum from the Montpellier side. 
as we just cannot wait for these minutes to pass by. Here's Kamara. And Gunnevi Maylis get rid of that. He does slice and it's arm on. Here's Thomas. Now he's got Joseph. He's got Maylis. He's got Gunnevi. But he's got a high shot before he can make a decision. Second yellow. Pomerlin goes. And now trouble looks ahead for La Rochelle. And now you've got a question. What are they trying to do here? Are they trying to win a game of rugby or are they trying to kill our players? Three injuries, two yellow cards. The focus has changed. I'm wondering how much has Bordeaux play, paid off these mugs? Imagine if we played our best team. Here's Tonafua. Oh, he's giving it away. La Rochelle living a child life at the moment. And it comes out wide for Norton. Great tackle there from Maxi Malins. Forward slow to get across. Carballo spots a gap, gets away from Merrick. Carballo having a storming match. Room on the left side, they open it up for Mahoney. Release. Get numbers in there, but not quite quick enough. Great little short ball. Merrick almost oversold it. Waiting for Carballo again. Big tackle on Prinsu. There goes side. Carballo back inside. Numbers are there. Bone now once more. Release. Sharp player on the breakout. It's Pierre Bowden now. To the right. Mahoney drives through three. One now standing performance by the second row, La Rochelle. Now they give us a win. There's plenty of blue jumpers defending out here, though. And that one is shut down pretty quickly as Bowden now takes it into contact yet again. Now there's a bit of width, and Norton looks to take on Thomas. Thomas holds him up, and Norton has another crack. Fence through one and it takes a good tackle. Thomas up and Adam again. This could be the turnover with Juan Gomez gets it. Sanconi, now it's time to play. Ritiz running. Here's the pace race. Ritiz winding back the clock. And it will be Vincent Ritiz with a final say in the regular season. He's been a standout. He's been the icon. The name that unclinically goes with Montpellier. A name synonymous with Montpellier rugby. And there's a reason why the fans love him. He's been superb, spectacular as these seasons have rolled by. And he does it the way he knows best. With the speed and just out and out pace against his opposition. Here's the conversion attempt from Bontier. The final say of this regular season to make it 31 points to 14. A 13 man, La Rochelle, put to the sword by Vincent Ritiz. As this one winds up a comfortable win for Montpellier, but not without a few little scares along the way. Big time injury worries we've got to look at, losing three players throughout the game. Two midfielders and, of course, a back row of Underhill, Rahlhardt and Harris all going down tonight. But the main thing, the bonus point win, that's what we come for, that's what we got. And the B team mainly held it all together. Well, four tries to two. Bon now was the man who really did the damage, as we predicted earlier. He was always going to be the key. Ehi West, great from the boot, but also a fallen hand. The try assists to the second bone now try before Montpellier. It was Vincent Ritiz, two tries for him, and Gundamy and Dalmon bookending that double from Ritiz. 48, four out of four conversions, also that penalty goal when things were looking a bit shaky at 21-14. A big win for Montpellier tonight, finishing the season on a high. Good work to possession to keep the ball in control, but of course those injuries are going to cost us, I think, as this game wears on. The season is not done yet. We've still got a couple of matches to go, and hopefully we won't need those injured players. But I just feel like one or two injuries later on in that semi-final could prove costly. Let's see the damage. Hopefully some of them may be ready for next episode. So two big bits of news heading into the finals of the top quartiles. First things first, the injuries. We had three of them. Two of them, to be fair, aren't too bad. Underhill and Ralhag out for four and five weeks, respectively. Both have head injuries. 
but it is Chris Harris who is gone. Pinched nerve, 13 weeks. That is half the season regardless. Um, so he will not play any further part in this series. But of course, Underhill, still a possibility for the grand final. Maybe, just maybe, he will be ready. The other piece of news is a real positive, And that is that the club has qualified for the 2024 playoffs. That is what we wanted. We've made it. We knew we had made it quite a long time ago, but we still haven't been able to topple that first place. But, of course, we're in the finals, and that's what matters the most. So, what have we got to look forward to here? Tickets to next weekend's 2024 top 14 playoffs match between Montpellier and La Rochelle. What? That's not right. La Rochelle were in ninth. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, this. What? That's not, that, something's broken. Like, we'll check that out. Let's see what else happened here. A uh, whore to the fans. I, <laughs> La Rochelle, they were ninth. What? Uh, get their hands on the hottest show in town. Uh, Coach Corblack spoke at a press conference with confidence uh, that his side were playing the brand of football to get them into the grand final appearance and the championship. I don't know why I quote myself saying this, but I'm not normally the one show up, show my cards early, but I think we've got a very strong side this year. We've had our ups and downs throughout the season, but overall we've put it together in the last part of the season, which is the most important. You'd be a brave man, oh yes you would, to put your money on any of the other sides. Ha, ha, ha. Yep, he's not wrong, is he? He's a wise man, is that cool fake? You can't go against him. But let's go to the fixtures. It's Clermont, you dum-dums. What the hell? I mean, they both play in yellow. But uh, La Rochelle, I read that and I'm like, hey, I put them as ninth in my build-up for this match we just recorded. What's going on there? But it is Clermont. Of course, the quarterfinals have actually already played out. So Clermont won their game clearly because they're in the semifinals. But let's take a look at the quarterfinals. And I guess before that, a final look at the standings. We finished in second position. 106 points. We played very well at the end. But a clear, clear difference between us and Bordeaux at the top. 466 points for. We were just 342. They got 118 to our 106. 22 bonus points to our 18. We were a clear second. And you say that between first and third as well. Much better than Claremont, but much worse than Bordeaux. Bordeaux just lost twice. Both of those games were to Montpellier. But, of course, we dropped games to teams like Asian, two of them. Never forget that. Uh, so ups and downs, certainly not wrong on that one. Let's check out the schedule. There it is. That's the one I want to look at. Fixtures, that's what I wanted to look at. Bordeaux in the final. What a surprise. Clermont absolutely thrashing Toulon and Stade Francais, the fruit drinks, taking out cast quite comfortably as well, I might add. There's no question about it. Bordeaux have been head and shoulders above the best, uh, to, above all teams this season. Claremont, of course, really, really good against the, well, the lesser play sides. But I don't know if they're quite up to the task of the top two this season. They were the team to beat last year, and they did the job as well. But this time, I think it's our year. Bordeaux versus Montpellier final. That's what it's going to be. But, of course, next episode... We've got to get there. Semi-final number two for a place in the final against Bordeaux. It is Montpellier versus Claremont. I'll see you all for that one, of course. But until then, a big thanks for watching as the series winds down to its hopefully victorious end. And I'll see you for that semi-final, of course. And more rugby action coming up soon as well. We've got a new year and we've got a whole host of new stuff coming your way. So if there's something you'd like to see, do let us know in the comment section as well. We've got a lot of cool stuff I'm thinking of bringing in. So um, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you all for the semi-final. Montpellier, Clermont. Until then, take care.